Hi everyone, my name is Liz I read and welcome to another video. So this video is my November TBR of a lot of books here. I may or may not get to them all, um, but I do want to talk about all of them because this is my plan before the end of the year for sure. And so if I do end up getting to all of them, that's great. If not, you may see some repeats for the December TBR. Either way, let's just get on with what I plan to read in the month of November. So first of all, I do want to talk about the books I think I'll probably end up finishing in October, but I'm such a mood reader that sometimes I change my mind. I am personally currently reading Season Storm by Leigh Bardugo. I'm 100 pages in. This is the book I'm working on. I'm feeling a little slumpy, so maybe I'll put it down and pick something else up. I don't know. Either way, this is book two in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I decided to reread this series. I read it like two years ago. I want to reread it because of the Netflix shows coming out soon, and I want to read it before then. I love the series. It's so much fun. And so this series will follow Lena. She's in this fantasy world and she enters the fold, which is this big dark expanse um, in Ravka that cuts the whole country in two and it has dangerous creatures in there. She's crossing it with a bunch of other people and she gets attacked. And when she gets attacked, she discovers her, her powers. She has light powers. After being discovered, the Darkling takes her in to the little palace, which is where Grisha live and train and so she goes there to learn about her powers to train and the story progresses from there there's a love triangle there's action there's lots of stuff going on i really enjoy this series i really enjoy this world so i'm happy to be in it i'm hoping to get to rune and rising after once i'm finished this but like i said i'm a mood reader so we'll just see how i feel when november 1st hits the plan is to get straight into Christmas books. So I have four titles here. I kind of want to get the get ahead of the game when it comes to Christmas books, mostly because then I can talk about them on my channel and recommend you Christmas books for the Christmas season. So the first book I got really cheap, and so that's what I picked up, is How the Dukes Stole Christmas. Um, this is like four short stories. It's um, romance, Regency. I've never tried Regency books before, specifically in the romance genre. I've read YA Regency, but that's about it. Um, but I do really want to try this genre. I don't see why I wouldn't. I really love romance, and I really love the Regency era, so I'm sure I'll love it just fine. So the authors here are Tessa Dare, Sarah McLenn, Sophie Jordan, and Joanne Shoup, I believe the last one is. Um, I've heard of almost all these authors. So yes, I'm really excited to try this genre and see if it will work for me. A new title is um, In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is their new book and I'm really excited to give it a try. I don't know much about it except that um, it's like a Groundhog Day um, Christmas story romance, which I'm excited to give a try. I've read one other book of theirs, my favorite Half Night Stand. Um, so I've been meaning to pick up more from this author because I did really enjoy that. I really like their writing. It's just super easy to get into. So if you're looking for romances, definitely recommend this author duo and I'm excited to try their Christmas version. Next, I have Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz. Clearly from the title is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. I believe it's gender swapped. So I think Darcy is the woman in the relationship and it's Luke Bennett who is um, the male lead. So yeah, I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. It's one of my lowest rated on Goodreads. <laughs> so hopefully it's not so bad. And it's a Hallmark movie. It's super short. It probably won't take me very long to read and I'm looking forward to it. The last Christmas book I have is Wet Light by Jay Asher. This is a YA contemporary romance. Our main protagonist, she lives on like a Christmas tree farm. And, you know, throughout the year she lives on the farm, but every Christmas she goes to California to sell the Christmas trees with her family. And I think there's some kind of romance here. That's all I know, but I'm looking forward to reading this one. The other series I really want to get to before the end of the year, if possible, is Iron Fate Trilogy. Um, specifically the second trilogy in this series. There's like, there's seven books in this entire series. I've read the first four. Um, this is specifically a reread for me. Um, and I decided to reread the series because there's a new Iron Fae book coming out in the new year. It comes out, I think, in February. So I have some time still, but I thought, you know, 
I may as well work through it. So the fifth book is The Lost Prince. The next one is The Iron Traitor, and the last one is The Iron Warrior. So this is like the second trilogy in this series. Um, the first series, we follow Megan. In book one, Megan goes into the fairy world. She finds out her best friend Puck is actually fairy, and she is half fae herself. Her little brother gets taken into the fairy world, so she goes into the fairy world to rescue him, and then her adventure starts there. So she has her own trilogy. There's a fourth book where we only follow Ash and Puck, but specifically it's Ash's story. And this trilogy, we are following Megan's brother, Ethan. We, we follow specifically Megan's brother, Ethan. And since she lives in the fairy world, time works differently. So Megan has a son who is ends up being Ethan's age, even though Ethan was um, a lot younger than Megan. And it's weird, but it's about Ethan and Megan's son, and they have an adventure together. I've been rereading this series for a while. I started it last year and just been taking my time. And it's been an interesting experience. It's not as great as I remember the first time around, but this series has a, a special place in my heart. I absolutely love it. Um, even though it's like not living up to what I remember, I, it still has a special place in my heart because it introduced me to fairies and I love fairies so much. Um, so book one is still my favorite out of the series and I really enjoyed book four. Um, so we'll see how I feel after this trilogy, but I'm super excited about the new book. I really, really want to read it. Puck is one of my favorite characters, and I just believe he deserves some happiness himself, so <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm like in the middle of a few series, and I want to work through those series. So one of them is the Something Strange and Deadly series. I've read book one a while back. I read book two also, but it's been a long while since I've read book two. And so, um, as you can see, I started book two at least a little bit. I'm going to reread it before I get to book three because I tried reading book three and I was a little confused. I couldn't remember everything. Like, I'm remembering most things, but specifically about Eleanor's magic. So, this series is a YA fantasy Regency story. And we follow Eleanor is actually set in the United States. Her brother's in trouble. Her brother has been kidnapped by the walking dead. So it's a zombie story. For whatever reason, there's dead bodies walking around and they are going on attacks in, I think it's Philadelphia is where she's set. She asks the help of the, the spirit hunters. She asks the help of the spirit hunters who are working for the city to help fight the zombies um, and it's a like a band of misfits who work together. She falls for one of them, um, Daniel I believe his name is, and the romance is really really good. I really love the angsty romance. So it's a lot of fun. I just want to pick it up again. Um, it's mostly like it's a necromancy fantasy I guess I should say. Um, it's not just random zombies going around. It's, speci it's specifically necromancers who are part of here. It's not actually scary. It's uh, it's just another fantasy. So definitely am enjoying this series and I'm hoping to finish it. The other series I'm working on is the Truth Witch series. So I would be moving on to Blood Witch. Um, this is also by Suzanne Dennard. I really enjoy her writing a lot. So pretty much any book she puts out, I'm probably going to read. And I'm enjoying Truth Witch for the most part. Wind Witch wasn't my favorite, which was book two, but I really enjoyed Sight Witch a lot. So I got a little bit more hope for this series. It's a fantasy world again is another young adult in this world there's different witcheries so um there's a bunch of people who have different um magical abilities and in that world we follow safia in insults safia is a truth witch so she can tell whether someone is lying or telling the truth and Insult is a thread witch she can see the connections between people and they're thread sisters so they're like best friends forever and they're for each other and safia who's the truth witch she is kind of on the run. People want her for her ability. The world is on the brink of war, and so many countries are seeking her out to use her ability. Um, and it's their adventure. There's two romances in here that are really good. 
Um, I love Suzanne Dennard's writing, so I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a YA fantasy. And the last book I'm going to talk about is The Dark Days Deceit. This is the third book in the Lady Helen trilogy or the Dark Days Club trilogy. This is, again, another fantasy Regency romance. It takes place in the UK. But Lady Helen, she's preparing for her debut and she needs to get married because her mother has left her with a bad reputation. Her mother died tragically and is a little bit mysterious. So she needs to get married off because of her reputation, because of her mother. But she's like experiencing weird things. She feels like, I don't know if energy, I keep on calling it energies, but she like feels like trembles in her body and she like has like huge amount of energy. Um, and she can read people really well. Like, she has these weird abilities that she doesn't quite understand why. And then one day she meets Lord Carlston, who seems to have possible answers about what's going on with her. He seems to have possible answers about her mother. So again, this is like a fantasy. It's like an urban fantasy, but set during the Regency era. And it's really, really good. So if you like monster fighting, you probably will like this. But it's more of a historical fiction. Like the focus is more on the relationships and the drama between characters than necessarily um, fighting monsters. But also in book two, especially there was more like espionage and things like that. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this series and I'm excited to read book three. Um, there's a love triangle, which is really, really good. It's actually a really good love triangle. Yeah, I'm excited to read this one. And those are all the books I'm hopefully gonna get to in November. We'll see um, whether or not I'll get to all of them. Probably not. Those are the books I'm definitely working towards to complete before the end of the year. So if you've read any of these books before, please comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about them. Do you like them? Do you not like them? I would love to know. I would love to know what you plan to read in the month of November. Please comment down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. If you want more bookish content from me, just click on the video on the screen. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you have not done so, you can follow me on Instagram and Goodreads. And you know what? I want you to keep reading. Bye.